Hi everyone, so welcome to today's video. I am sharing with you my favorite setting powders. For the most part, these are translucent with the exception of two powders that are more brightening that I really like for specific areas of the face. And I wanted to share with you guys my favorites um, because I use setting powders every single day and sometimes I get stuck using the same one, which you will see that one coming up um, here in a moment. But I wanted to share with you guys some of my favorites just because there's so many out there and it can be kind of overwhelming when you want to support you look for setting powders and it seems like every brand has like five different kinds. And these are all going to be translucent. None of them are going to be tinted. None of them are going to be with the exception of two and um, I will talk about those towards the end of the video. But they're going to be translucent because I feel like that's really I guess ideal for most skin types. Um, if you have the darker skin tones and you know using a translucent powder may come across a little bit ashy so then therefore you can do something that is um, a bit more tinted. So there's several different brands and I have quite a few to show you so let's get started. Now as you guys know if you've been watching my videos I do like to use liquid foundation. I use one from Clinique and when I'm not using that I'm using mineral loose powder from Bare Minerals. And that's just kind of the two foundations that I'm going towards um, at the moment. Those are the ones that I'm reaching for. But whenever I use a liquid foundation, regardless of what brand, regardless of the finish really, I particularly myself like matte finishes or those that look very natural. I always set my foundation with some sort of setting powder because throughout the day I do get oily and I do feel like sometimes when I use a setting powder, it helps prolong the longevity of my foundations and it just keeps it in place just a little longer and if there's a foundation that I like that seems to be just a little bit more dewy or maybe something that looks a little bit more um, kind of radiant on the skin, not necessarily like a luminous finish, but looks a little bit more kind of dewy on the skin, that tends to look even oilier looking throughout the day as my oils start to produce throughout the day. And so therefore I rely on setting powders and I usually use translucent ones. I'm not big on using any sort of like particular face powders or powdered compacts to set makeup because I think that that does add more coverage, it adds another layer of product, and can add that cakiness and heavy feel, which I am completely against. That's why I like my minerals and my Clinique foundation because it's very light. So I will list those two foundations down below and the corresponding videos as well that I have that specifically talks about those two foundations that I'm using. So for setting powders, because I mentioned the Bare Minerals, I'm just gonna show you quickly the uh, Bare Minerals Mineral Veil. This has been a product that's been out for many years and I actually do like using this more of a final step to kind of go over everything and I've also used it to set my liquid foundation. Now before I get into the other setting powders, I do want to kind of touch on how I use the powders or at least how I apply them. I use this guy right here. This is a beauty blender. I always set my foundation with a damp beauty blender and you might think, okay, well damp beauty blender, doesn't that make the powder cake up? Believe it or not, it does not. It helps sort of set everything and get that matte finish, but also removes any possible cakiness that may come of it. If you pour too much translucent powder in the cap of the product and you pick too much up, for some reason this being damp, it just blends everything else, but then it sort of absorbs any excess product and powder, so it doesn't ever look powdery, and I love that. Now you could use a light brush if you wanted to. And the brush that I like to use is one from Real Techniques. If I'm gonna use a brush to set my foundation, I use something that's very soft and very gentle. Nothing that's super dense or um, a lot of bristles because that's gonna to add too much product. So my preferred method between the two, I would say a damp beauty blender always. So I like the Mineral Veil. It's really inexpensive. You can find it at Sephora, you can find it at Ulta, you can find it at the Bare Mineral Store. So you can find it in several different places. The next one that I like as well is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. I am pretty much almost out of this one. And this is just a smaller travel size. It does come in a full size. And of course, this does have a big cult following. For a reason, it's actually a really good powder. And for a while, this is all I was using. It leaves a beautiful finish to the skin. If you have oily skin, I think you'll like this as well. And it just makes your skin feel like there's just nothing on it. And that's what I like. So I do love this one. Um, I don't want to have to rank them because these are just the ones that I have in my collection that I reach for and I always rely on, but the Laura Mercier is definitely at the top of my list and that's just the uh, loose setting powder. The next one is from It Cosmetics and this is the Bye Bye Pores. This one I don't use as much, um, but what I like about this is that sort of silky feel. So if you like 
those um, setting powders that have that sort of silky kind of slip to it. There's something about this powder that when you use it, it has that sort of soft kind of rose petal finish that it leaves on the skin. Like when you rub it in, it makes your skin feel so different than any other powder. It makes the skin feel as soft as a rose petal. It's really, really different and very unique because even though the other powders are not heavy or very powdery and thick, they don't have the feeling that this has. The poreless finish airbrush powder. I think there's a specific product ingredient that they use to give it, but I'm putting it on the back of my hand and it just feels so incredibly soft and it just is really nice. And I like using this for setting the under eye area as well because it just leaves that smooth, silky feel behind. And it is a really nice product. It does come with a little powder puff as well that you can use to kind of press this all over the face. And mine is quite disgusting. Um, I do apologize about that, but um, this is really good. This is probably the most unique one as far as finish is concerned. It has that bit of, bit of something. <laughs> and then my last one that has been my go-to that I'm really running low on is my Cinema Secrets. This is the Ultra Lucent. Setting powder, again, this is the um, colorless one. What I love about this is that it is an extremely, extremely finely milled powder. If you are looking for a setting powder that does not leave any sort of cakiness behind, that's very, very light and just feels like nothing, this is it. This is the Ultra Lucent, so it's very, very finely milled, and it doesn't look very heavy. And I think that's a very common factor amongst all of these that I'm showing you today. But this has been one that I have been using for many, many months, and I used it Today with my damp beauty blender over my foundation. I've used this to set my lid area before applying eyeshadow. I've used it for the under eye area and I just love this powder and it truly is colorless because there are a few setting powders that when you put them on they sort of almost look a little bit kind of weird like they've added some like a tone to the skin. I know it's completely bizarre but this one is truly colorless and there is nothing about it that's going to change the color of your foundation or um, in a way, we'll change the finish because if you're setting something, of course, it's going to sort of tone down the finish of that product. But overall, in general, this is one of my very, very favorite ones. I got mine at Sephora. This big old tub here has lasted me months. It's um, 17 grams, so it's quite large of a product. And I want to say this was less than 23 like 23 to $25. So really inexpensive for the amount that you're getting. It's a fabulous setting powder. And then my last two powders actually came in a set of three that I got from Sephora. Um, but they have the most adorable, the cutest packaging a setting powder could have. And they're the best of setting powders. I have the uh, purple one here, which is the Brightening Violet Powder. And then this pink one is the Vanilla Rose. I use the Vanilla Rose a little bit more than the Violet, but both of them are absolutely beautiful. I love the pink one for under the eyes because it just brightens the under eye area. It has a very soft, light pink tone to it. It's a really, really nice powder. It's not going to be super pink and like adding a color pink to your under eye area because it can look kind of scary. Oh, I'm using a pink powder. It is very, very nice. There you can see it. You can see how much brighter that looks in that specific area as opposed to the opposite sides that don't have it. It just adds this illuminating sort of look to the skin without adding shimmer because I do get oily right in this area here. So I tend to use only translucent setting powders for that area and I love using this one under the eyes and also in that sort of triangle motion. And again, with the pointed tip of my beauty gun, I just go in and kind of pat and I absolutely love the finish and I also love the effect of the vanilla rose. Now I also really do enjoy the violet one. I don't use this quite as much. I'm running a little low on the um, the pink one, but as you can see, it's got a soft kind of purpley um, lavender tone, and this is very brightening as well. And that's what I love about these is that they're brightening, as you can see both of them here side by side. Just use this over your normal concealer, and it just sort of elevates that level of brightness, which I find <laughs> I definitely need under the eye area because, um, yeah, I have hereditary dark circles, and sometimes it can get pretty bad, and when you don't sleep that well, that's the first place that people are going to see it. <laughs> so I do love those two, um, the lavender and the violet. It did come with a third one, so it came in a trio. This is the vanilla one, and this is the yellow one. And this has a bit of a chocolatey scent to it, and I love the vintage -y type of packaging. But this yellow one, um, I don't use it very often. I don't typically use a lot of yellow. But if you have a little bit of redness or anything like that, you can just kind of lightly dust it. But again, um, I'm going to stick to the ones that I use on a regular basis, and 
I I love these and I highly recommend that you look into the Besame because they're really cute, the packaging. Um, Besame in Spanish means kiss me, so I thought that was really cute and the packaging is absolutely adorable. <laughs> All right, so that completes the roundup of my top most reached for setting powders that I have in my collection. I certainly have quite a few other ones, but these are just the ones that I reach for and I like to alternate them and I've been doing that lately instead of just sticking with just the one cinema secret. I've been picking up the Laura Mercier, I've been picking up the Bare Minerals, definitely still sticking to these two here, the best made ones because I love those. So I'll have everything listed down below for you just in case you're interested in any of these powders. I hope that if you try them that they work for you. If you have tried these, please let me know in the comment section what you think of them. Also, if you have any favorites, please do share with me and the other viewers here. And I appreciate you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it, found this helpful, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos in the future. You can also follow me on social media. I have Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all that jazz. It's always listed in the description box just in case you want to follow me off camera. And I appreciate you so much for being here, for being you, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.